girl, tell me why I went all the way down to DSS for no reason. Don't you remember when they sent me in the mail last month a redetermination paper for my food stamps? I filled it out, I took it in, and I turned it in. I turned it in a month and a half early. Fast forward, it's a month later. Fire drops the mail off, and they sending me the same paperwork. So I fill it out, make all my little copies, go down there this morning, just for her to tell me, Oh, yeah, we already have your information. Why'd they send me this? It whole ass says, if you do not turn this in by such and such a date, we're taking everything and you're going to lose it all. So I go down there making sure that I'm dotting my T's, crossing my T's and dotting my I's just to find out that it was like a total waste of time. But not really. It doesn't matter. Um, she told me that they have until the end of the month to turn in the information that they threaten us with to turn in within a certain amount of time. So when I got the paperwork last month, it said you need to turn it in by July, like July 5th. And it's just now June. I turned my stuff in a month ago. So because there's that long gap, there's like two months in between there, they have that whole two months to update your file. And if your worker doesn't update your file within that two months, they just kick you another letter that says, fill this paperwork out or drop it off by such and such or we're going to take everything. Like, bro, what are you talking about? That is such a waste of ink, of paper, and you're stressing everybody out and confusing people. Like, I have my wherewithal, but a lot of people who get benefits, they have disabilities. Some of them have learning disabilities. Some of them are just... They don't have the capacity to deal with the nuances that you have to go through when you're applying for benefits. And it's just so challenging. It's really sad. So that's why I hope that people know that there are case managers to help them deal with those things. And I'm just really lucky that I'm able to do that because it's having to navigate getting assistance for like utilities or food or anything like that can be a little challenging if you don't know how to move around so i did that so i really enjoyed my walk i really enjoyed my walk now in my head i'm all pumped up to let's just start going for walks in the morning like girl i don't want to set myself up for failure but i walked so much and so long because i left like an hour early by accident so i kind of just walked around the whole town because i had other things to do so i just did those things and it went back so i really enjoyed that walk i felt real fit and I don't know. It was just very enjoyable. I was enjoying the flowers and the trees and breathing deep and listening to my music. I had my little tennis shoes on, a little New Balances. You know, it's easy to walk in New Balances. Like, it, it puts a pep in your step. I love that aerodynamic shoe. And it's like, so that was the pace I kept. And I loved my heart. Like, I was sweating. It was just good. It was a nice workout. I like that. It reminded me of when I used to jog when I first started losing weight because uh, Ghost was locked up. The kids were in Baltimore. I was in this big-ass three-story mansion with six bedrooms and a whole separate apartment in the bottom, thinking that if I got this big-ass house, they'd give me my kids back. But it wasn't. It, it didn't work. So I was in that big ass house by myself, going to college, and I would just like wake up in the morning, go to school, come back. I would wake up in the morning, I would go to school. After I would get out of school, I would go to the liquor store, and if I had a studio session, I would go to that session, stay there all night, and then go home. Then when I got home, I would just walk around the complex, because I didn't want to be in the house by myself. I didn't have no animals, I didn't have no family, I had nothing. So that was it. I would just go to school, sell pills, because go sold pills before he got locked up this time he's been locked up three times so he had been selling pills so i picked up his business because i was a housewife i was a housewife at that time i i didn't have any income he he made all the money so when he got locked up i just took over and i started selling pills to his customers i got it down to just like two people honestly that were not just customers they were friends of his because I wasn't going to be in a position to be robbed. And I was 
trying to get my kids back. Like I told yes, I was like, what do you want me to do? Because at that time, they had been sent to live with my adopted mom in Baltimore because I was on drugs and their dad was on drugs. And shit just kept happening to where, because we lived right down the street from DSS. So if, they, if we got into an argument or the kids just did anything, like anything, 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 DSS was right there. So, like, it, it, it just, it was so bad back then. It was so bad back then. I just had the weirdest life. I was a whole housewife, housewife to the point where I cleaned and cooked and literally taught my children how to read, how to write. And that was my life, cooking, cleaning, washing clothes, and, and teaching my kids. So, like, them being gone wasn't just the, oh, I lost custody of my kids. No. I laid on the floor and howled like an animal, like a, son, a, a wounded dog when they took them from me. Like, that, that was my world. Before I had them, their dad was my world. But once I had them, nothing else mattered. And just fucking drugs that we started using because he was selling them. And when I came out here, I didn't know what no damn ghost was. I came from Baltimore. This is a white boy that acts like the hardest person I've ever met in my life. Had all these drug connections, was doing all these hits. And I just never seen anything like that. I didn't know that about him when I came out here. Everybody in the town knew about him, but I'm coming from out of town. Going to college... All of a sudden I see this dude not knowing that he's been watching me I'm thinking I'm just meeting him for the first time when I met him and my roommate woman he was she was like you don't know who that is I was like no she's like that's a ghost I'm like what the fuck is a ghost she told me that he used to run coke between here and in West Virginia I'm not, like, I'm a square. Like, in moving to a small town from a big city like that, people judge you by how you look. So people treated me like I was some sort of a thug because of how I look. And they knew I was from Baltimore, not knowing that I'm a whole ass square. Whole ass square. Whole ass square. So they had the wrong idea about me from the whole beginning. So they, everybody was under the illusion that we were some sort of like something we weren't. But that's a story for another time. I feel like I've lived so many lifetimes. I've been so many different people. I've been so many different versions of myself. And the one consistent thing that I've always done is get distracted and believe what people say to me about me. I always believed the negative stuff. I internalized it. I started to believe that maybe I wasn't capable of things or I didn't deserve love. I did not realize that I was attracting people who were sent to destroy me. I understand that now. And it's cool. It's cool because I survived it. And I'm able to turn those experiences into beautiful pieces of art that can help other people realize that they're not alone and that they can change their life. Because I've had my life taken from me. I had my children taken from me. I had a lot taken from me, you know what I'm saying? And I'm still here. And everybody that hurt me is suffering right now. That's the crazy part. I don't have to do anything to anyone that's ever done something to me because they did it to themselves. What they going through right now, all them negative spirits and all them, you know, bad, bad intentions they sent my way are now coming on to them. Because that's not what you do, yo. You get back what you give out, you feel me? It's just like this. You get back what you give out, you feel me? Everybody want to call karma out her name. But it's just, it's just the way the game goes. That's the way energy flows. We all are subject to the same universal law. Can't judge a book by its cover. I love you. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Peace.